were the narcissist's lottery ticket. And now, he or she wants you back. Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. And if you haven't already subscribed, do hit the subscribe button and be sure to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put a video out. So if you've ever been with a narcissist for any length of time, for a good amount of time, chances are you were grade A supply for him or her. Oh yeah, you were. And whether grade A supply or just regular supply, I suppose, right? Um, the narcissist still has the same narrative. And that narrative is love bomb, right? Or idealization, where they hook you, they just flood you where maybe a relationship would take six, to, six months to a year within two to three months. They're condensing all of that in that short amount of time. So, of course, you're, you see stars and, uh, you know, your hearts go bump, 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 and they know exactly what they're doing. Well, they've done it a thousand times before. And then, once they know they have you hooked, then that's where you have the derailing happening, where they devalue you or belittle you or berate you, insult you, control you, manipulate you. Then, if you're pushing too far away and you're, you're leaning outwards away from them, they'll do the love bombing trip again, just enough to get you back in the game. Or um, they'll do a fake apology, right? So that's where they'll, they'll say they're sorry. Uh, like my narc um, would say, I'm sorry for the situation. And I would go, uh, what situation? Uh, you know, why we're arguing. Why are we arguing? What are we discussing? What are we talking about? Uh, oh, you know, you know, the situation. Are you gonna accept my apology or not? And looking back, it, it just, they couldn't even say the words I'm sorry for my selfishness. I'm sorry for hurting you. I'm sorry for causing you so much pain. I'm sorry for the manipulation and deception and stealing from you and cheating on you and gaslighting you and ghosting you. I'm sorry for those specific things. They never will. They won't admit it at all. They feel they are above any kind of judgment or being called out on anything, but yet, they'll do those very things to you, even unjustifiably, and feel justified in doing it. So, here's what happens. Here's what happened with me. So, you go along, and I'm an empath, I'm a Christian, I believe in treating people with kindness and love and goodness, and um, I actually grew up with a narcissistic mother, and so I was familiar with the cycles then. We knew how to placate mom, and we knew how just what when to say nothing, and what just kind of sit back and take it, so to speak. And back then, I didn't know there was a term for this. I just thought, I came to the conclusion at an early age, well, some people just have really bad mental illness and you just kind of need to walk on eggshells as my whole family did with my mother. So moving forward, and that's why I've been in three separate narcissistic relationships, um, and you think that, well, you know, you just need to give these people a little bit more time, right? You just need to love them bigger. Um, you need to see past their shortcomings. But since being in three consecutive relationships uh, in the dating field with narcissists and starting to study the topic and learn about it and being able to pinpoint this from an early age with my own narcissistic mother and then these relationships. Um, it, and it wasn't a matter of, for me, codependency, like I had to have this person in my life no matter what, no matter how he's treating me. No, I just kept thinking, well, if I try harder, right? If I'm just kinder, more understanding, keep teaching and so on, 
look, you don't need to build a mob. You don't need somebody who you have to try to fix. You can't fix anyone. And trying to help someone without their consent or that they're willing to receive that help is just trying to fix someone. The narcissist does not want to be rehabilitated ever. So being in a relationship or an entanglement, as I say, is going to go absolutely nowhere very, very fast. So the moment you realize this and you've gotten information about this topic and the kind of people these are, they're demonically driven. They have devilish voices in their ears. I mean, the, my last narc actually said that uh, as he stormed out, <clears throat> excuse me, as he stormed out and uh, I was trying to discuss something with him and his eyes just got really buggy and um, he just said, well, I hear the voices. And then he stormed out and ghosted me for five days. And I just began to put pieces of the puzzle together, right? And you come to the conclusion that this is not progressing. It just keeps um, looping, looping around. I call it the merry-go-round. It's actually the horror-go-round. Uh, I even have a video about the narcissist and the Groundhog Day time loop that they are forever in and how they want to suck you into that time loop. And in that time loop, you're reliving the same day over and over again with similar events and it never gets better. In fact, the number one goal besides getting supply from you, uh, sucking your energy from you, uh, destroying you is, is complete destruction of you. So on that merry-go-round or hard-go-round, right? There's the brass ring. That's what the narcissist wants to try to reach out for and hopes to get closer and closer to each and every day. And that brass ring represents total destruction of you and me until you awaken, right? And you see them for who they really are. Now remember this, if someone can disrespect you and belittle you with ease time after time after time, that is how they truly feel about you. So the word love to me is an action word. It's not just words where you say, I love you, but then you turn around and you punish them and bring pain to them. No, the word you want to, I want to see your love. I'm not just hear it. Hearing's nice, but I want to see your love. So getting back to why you were the narcissist's lottery ticket is they discarded you one more time for the nth time, right? And they thought the same pattern was going to occur where you were going to come back once they hooked you with a fake apology or they hovered you and you were going to come back and give them one more chance. Um, so then they find out that you, you're done. Game over. You're not getting back. In fact, you completely detach from them. This is power to you. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is power, a powerful tool to you. And what it does to the narcissist is totally injures them. They are angry. They're completely rejected. They feel completely irrelevant. So now they really want to destroy you. And they'll try any tactic as a secret agenda to get you back, send in the flying monkeys, the minions, uh, trap you, try to entrap you back into their entanglement. But you being now the wiser, the wise empath, the wise Christian, the, the one who now understands the demonic influences that drive these narcissists and you're no longer going to be a part of the facade because now you've awakened, you understand what is really going on in the back end of things. And so you stay strong, you heal, you rebuild yourself. And the narcissist, wow, 
his or her world has just crumbled and crushed because they realized that you were grade A supply, that you were their lottery ticket, and what they did is they crumbled it up, threw it into a garbage bin, and the rain started falling down on it, and somebody else came along and saw its value in the garbage bin, picked it up, flattened it up, let it air dry, and then cashed it in, and they are now the recipient of the lottery ticket. I don't even like using the word lottery ticket, but I have to tell you, um, two of the three narcissists that I dated, one called, said that um, he won the lottery with me, and that sounded so creepy to me. I didn't really think about it too much then. The other person, the other narcissist said, wow, I hit the jackpot. And again, it sounded creepy then too, but now looking back, boy, I'm wiser now. I understand what's happening in the back end. I can put my feelers out and I can um, just understand what behind the words, why some of these narcissists, how they strategize with their words and twist things and, and um, try to learn everything about you so that they can mimic you and copy you like a chameleon and um, win you over that way. And I, I remember thinking with my last relationship, I'm thinking, this is amazing. This person likes everything I like. Wow, this is this is great. We are, we really have a strong connection. We're really in sync. No. Red flag right there. So you, we're watching more closely now. So this narcissist is going to be ruminating about you for the rest of their lives. Let me tell you this. You are a strong and wonderful and amazing empath, a great Christian. <clears throat> to them, you were great A supply. Do you know how long it takes to find someone just like you for the narcissist to replace? You are irreplaceable and he or she knows that. It will take them years and even decades if they ever even find someone just like you ever again. Know that. Know that your value is so beyond uh, what they'll ever find again. And now I want you to take the time to heal, to rediscover your value, to love and respect yourself enough, right, to where you're not going to tolerate disrespect and say, oh, that person is probably having a bad day. No, no, and especially if this is like the 30th time they're disrespecting you. Again, remember that if somebody repeatedly in their cycle of abuse treats you as very badly, that is how they truly feel about you. You need to not walk, but run from that situationship, from that entanglement. It is a fake relationship and it's only designed to supply the narc and destroy you in the process. But you are all the wiser now. The narcissist has only one goal in life. Seek out supply, steal, and destroy. That's it. Then start again. Seek out supply, steal, destroy. And that's why you're going to empower yourself, detach from the narcissist, let him wallow in all of his injury. You've spent plenty of time trying to help him or her. I know you have because I know I have. I know how much time I spent and I know how much you must have spent as well. And the rest of his or her life, they are going to be ruminating about you, looking you up, searching for you, continuing to send out more and more flying monkeys, and you will be nowhere to be found because 
you have completely blocked him or her on your so, uh, social media like I did. I even had, my kids were blocking the, the last narcissist, kept trying to like their stuff and comment, and they're like, oh mom, this is just too creepy. I'm like, yes, it certainly is. Block, block, block. Close the doors, lock the windows, pull the shades down. And as you heal and you rebuild yourself up and you move on and you're into new endeavors, new adventures, um, new projects, new relationships, the narcissist is going to be forever tortured. Just tortured at the thought that he or she cannot get to you and that you are living the best version of your life now. And I have a really great verse that's going to drive this home and I'm gonna read it to you. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse 14. Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion hath light with darkness you are righteousness you have endeavored to walk in rightness and purity and truth the narcissist is unrighteousness you are light they are darkness don't be unequally yoked when you're unequally yoked they're going to drag you down they're going to pull you down and ultimately destroy you but you have escaped and you are now rebuilding your life. They did not take out your light. They did not do it. They could not do it. That light is that true flame within your soul. And this is what is yours and yours alone. And no one's going to steal that from you. So yes, you were the narcissist lottery ticket, but now that you are so much wiser and getting wiser every day, they are crazy with torture that they couldn't destroy you, that they couldn't get you back, that they couldn't keep their claws in you. And you are not only just surviving, right? You are thriving. And this community is all about thriving. And I want you to share your experience as the lottery ticket being plucked from this narcissist's hand down below. And also, if you have any prayer requests, write those down. And I appreciate your prayers for me as well. And let's go through this journey victoriously together. And we are thriving together, supporting each other. And again, if you have not already subscribed, do hit the subscribe button and be sure to hit the notification bell. And if you liked this video, do hit that like button as well. And until next time, be blessed in your heart and walk in peace.